NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. We'll see Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans taking on Gardner Minshew and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Got a wonderful fall afternoon in the state of Texas. The roof is open and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here's the Jaguars offense for the first time with Gardner Minshew, the Washington State product, leading the way. I know that people like him, and he's kind of a phenomenon in the league as Gardner Minshew. But I'm not sure he gets enough credit for how well he plays the game of football at the quarterback spot. Remember, he was a six-round pick and a surprise six-round pick at that. More than held his own as a rookie after Nick Foles' broken clavicle, forced him onto the field in the second quarter of week one. The Jaguars went six and six with him as a starter in 12 opportunities. Now they've got a chance to continue to progress and move forward with Gardner Minshew leading their team. Minshew, first and 10. That one complete to D.D. Westbrook. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Well, when the Jaguars wanted to throw the football, they often looked at D.D. Westbrook, who just completed that play there. 101 targets, 66 catches for both 2018 and 2019. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. Third play in this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Now Minshew. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, you know, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? typically a blitz and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen now that allows your blitzers to get there on fourth down on is logan cook to punt deandre carter is deep for the texans now fair catch is called for and taken at the we'll call it the 37 yard line just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10.
Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 37. And he'll throw right away. And this one grabbed by Darren Fells. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. A shotgun snap for Watson. He's got his tight end. It's Fells. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. This is David Johnson, the former All-Pro. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. From just shy of midfield, Watson, open man, the tight end fails. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. Good carry and pick up for a first down there by David Johnson, and he has a chance to fill a lot of voids for this Houston Texans team. They lost their 1,000-yard rusher from last year. Carlos Hyde went to Seattle. But back in 2016, David Johnson led the NFL in all-purpose yards with the Arizona Cardinals. The Texans will be happy to see that guy all year long. Now a first down throw, Watson rolling. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Finding his way home for the sack that time, Taven Bryant. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. 47 is the mic. 47 is the mic. Here's Watson. Over the middle, it's Fells. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Two yards and able to get the first down in the process. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing, right? And everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs. It gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the gun, here's Watson. That's complete, right around the eight. 
And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. It's Deshaun Watson with a touchdown pass to Brandon Cooks. And the Texans have taken the early lead. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stop it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it results in the Texans finding the end zone. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Takes this about five yards deep. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Well, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Charles, looking at what they've done so far this year, they got a surprising week one victory against Indianapolis, but now three straight losses. Week four, they fall to Cincinnati. Joe Burrow, the rookie, was really good. Carved him up for 300 yards. So now, if you look at this Jacksonville team four weeks into the year, CD, what do you make of them? Well, for them, Gardner Minshew piloting them, that part is working pretty well for them. Integrating LaVisca Chenault, the rookie wide receiver. They're getting some good play there, but the defense is really, really struggling. And they've got good athletes on that side of the ball. They're just not coordinated and not cohesive yet. They're giving up nearly 30 points per game and giving up nearly 400 yards per game. So there's plenty of room for improvement going forward. They get 0-4 Houston next. They'll take that a trip on the road, and then they host 1-3 Detroit. Those should be two games that they should be competitive and have a chance to win. Now they'll work from the 29 on second and six. Shotgun handoff to Thompson, and he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Open man is Westbrook complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. But Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left. Ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Let's go now. 90 foot. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Throwing on first down is Minshew. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. And sometimes change can be good, and Chris Conley with a nice catch there is showing us exactly how. First four seasons in Kansas City, kind of buried on the depth chart there. First year in Jacksonville last year, career highs in yardage with 775, and added five touchdowns to that list as well. A gain of four on the play, and it'll be a second down. Now a second down and six. Here's Minshew. 
toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. DJ Chark, first time Pro Bowler, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And they won't try and pooch it. It's a fake. Oh, but he'll be stopped well, well short of the first down marker, and it's a turnover on downs. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool this defense. And this Texans defense stands tall. Well, the Houston Texans, Charles, we got to talk about what's going on with them this year. 0-4, remember, back-to-back -back defending AFC South champions, but first time they've been winless through four games since 2008. They fall to the Vikings in a matchup of 0-3 teams in Week 4. But much of their problems, they're coming on the defensive side of the ball. They're last in the NFL against the run through four weeks as Dalvin Cook ate him up in week four, and plus CD through four games, they have not had a single takeaway of any kind. And they've talked about it, and they've talked about it, and they've talked about repping it in practice and doing extra drills and being conscious of it, and they still haven't been able to take the ball away from any of their opponents. Plus, as you noted, people are running the football against them, especially in the second half of games, especially in the fourth quarter. They've got to get this thing figured out. They're out of time because the last 0-4 team to make the playoffs, the then San Diego Chargers in 1992. Stan Humphreys, where have you gone? This week, though, they host a one-win Jacksonville team. Something's got to give. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Out of the gun, Watson. Finding fouls complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. That one good for 24 yards. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. A first down carry here for Johnson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. He was taken down by Cassius Marsh. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Watson to give, this is Johnson. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. From the gun on third, Watson. He may try and run for this. And down inside the 15 he goes. Deshaun Watson, so multi-dimensional, able to scramble for the first. That's something you have to be aware of as a defense and have to find a way to account for him. And if you're not going to use a spy, you're telling your guys to keep your eyes on him because when he breaks out and makes plays like that, all he does is hurt you. Have to at least be able to contain him somewhat. There they could not. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. I 
And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Ten more there and another first down. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. They'll run it with Johnson, and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Taking it in from two yards out, and the Texans push further out in front. And Charles, he's able to dive in there in a short yardage situation. Just find a place to get to the end zone. Didn't matter where it was, but once he did, used his nose for the end zone and dove in. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's David Johnson who provides the capper as he scores on the touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Taken in the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. carry for Raquel Armstead and they're able to get this one across the 35 right off the bat it's a first down to start the drive 12 yards I have to admit I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter and a lot of teams will just panic abandon the playbook and just start firing the ball all over the place it's way too early for that stick to what works for you down double digits and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there you're right they're sticking to the game plan getting the ground game going a lot of football left to be played now Minshew on first and ten Flush to his right. Now he'll pull it down. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The call, baby. 14 0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now a first carry here for Robinson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Check 
On second and 12, Minshew. Escaping the pressure right. He'll run it. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Out of the gun is Minshew. Brought in here by Tyler Eifert. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. Good catch there by Tyler Eifert in Jacksonville, who needed help at the tight end position, signed him to do exactly that. Spent his first seven years in Cincinnati, a terrific red zone threat. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Looking to throw it. Minshew caught Eifert over the middle. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Another connection between the two. This one good for 12 and a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. The Jags with their first opportunity in the red zone. First and 10 right at the 20. And he completes it to Westbrook. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. J.J. Watt that time able to do what he does best, and that's sack the quarterback. And there's a familiar sight, J.J. Watt with the sack, and he's absolutely a force of nature when he's on the field. Unfortunately, he's only played more than eight games once in the last four seasons, but when he plays full-time, he ends up being in the running every time for NFL Defensive Player of the Year, an award he's won three times in the past. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. The pressure really ratcheting up. They get the sack on first down. Then a near sack. They got to him there just as it was leaving his hand. Yeah, they might need to change their pass protection scheme a little bit. Maybe bring another guy into the backfield to help protect the quarterback. Because that was awfully close. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Field goal forthcoming for Steven Hauschka. This one from 35 yards away. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14 to 3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11 play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. 
Houston set to take over. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 21. He'll throw from the gun. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Well, hey, you know what I want to do? Let's take a look at some of the leaders right now around the National Football League because some impressive numbers. Although the Cowboys are struggling, Dak Prescott, almost 1,700 passing yards. He's on pace right now for better than 6,700. Russell Wilson, we know how well he's playing. 16 passing touchdowns. That's on a record pace. Rushing-wise, Dalvin Cook for him. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Miles Jack. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. Look at DJ Chark as he and the rest of the offense head back out. A chance maybe here for them to get him more involved. They're down here on the scoreboard, and he's been very quiet. And the silence has been deafening for his team. They don't need that at all. They need fireworks. They need explosive plays. They need him touching the football in any way possible. Maybe go to some jet sweeps. Anything to get him going. Yeah, something to get in the ball. We'll see if they can do it. They'll run on first down. It's Robinson. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine. Minshew, his big tight end, Tyler Eifert, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So they've been unable to capitalize on a great field position as of yet. Here's third and nine. Minshew sets to throw. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first, now this from 43. Hauschka's kick is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14 to six now. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces them to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. So the lead trim down to eight as here comes the kickoff, and it's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Deshaun Watson of the Texans offense trot back out there. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, 
it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, he's looked pretty good to this point. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Working with a second and three. They'll hand it off now. Johnson. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not yeah, to see people yeah, overthink it. Just right. hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now a handoff, Johnson. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Eight yards to go on second down. Now a 10th carry for Johnson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. They'll try the air now with Watson. And this would complete to Will Fuller. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. A gain of six there on first. There's a good reception there by Will Fuller. And if you're looking for breakout players in 2020, He's a big-time candidate for it because he has a rapport with Deshaun Watson, and now with DeAndre Hopkins no longer in Houston, he could be their top receiver. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it, and the Jags grab it. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. He had the option there, decided to keep it, exposed himself and fumbled it. Yeah, and you worry about the hits he's going to take in that situation. In this case, not only does he take the hit, he coughs the ball up, as you noted. Jags football again. DJ Chark ready to rock and roll. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter. They're losing. You got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree. So you have to give them credit. But that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game. Change formations, change where he lines up, put him in motion, anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. Minshew going to lead up the Jaguars first and 10 at about the 32. A pass complete here to Conley. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. On second and very short, Minshew. Short pass, Eifert on the receiving end. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 31-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. 
You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll run here with Robinson. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. When you're lateral to the line of scrimmage, linebackers keep those shoulders square so they can go up and down. But when it's time to go, turn your shoulders just like a running back. Get through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. Now second and 11 from the 32. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. He's at the 30, the 20. And they will score a pick six for the Texans TD. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-6. to six. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Keelan Cole now to return. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Gardner Minshew and the Jags ready to go on offense once again. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggled. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Minshew and the Jags now with a first and 10 at their own 27. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Throwing on second and 14. Minshew and his throw is going to be incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback, 
are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. That'll be a 47-yard punt, officially five on the return. Now here's David Johnson in the Houston offense yet again. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. Operating from the gun, Watson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. And with that, we want to remind you, it takes all of us to fight cancer. That's why the NFL and the American Cancer Society teamed up to create Crucial Catch. They've been working together for over a decade, and you can join the fight. Get screened today. Visit NFL.com slash Crucial Catch. And that, Charles, obviously a very worthy endeavor. No doubt about it. Everybody that I know, probably everyone you know, affected in some way or some form, everyone wants to support this cause. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. He finds his target, Fuller. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Watson on first down. Short throw. Fells has got it. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. To the air yet again, Watson. He gets it left side to Johnson. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. He finds Randall Cobb on the completion. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. They'll contain him to just four, second down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Watson looks to throw again. Throwing the out route and complete. That's Cobb. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one.
Kaimi Fairbear now to attempt the Texan field goal. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will extend their lead even further. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that. And we haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a the half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Cole now on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Time here for likely one play, then off to the locker room, and they're going to have some adjustments to make. They certainly will, and I think a lot of people are thinking to themselves, all right, take the knee, get out of here, regroup. But how will the head coach and his staff approach halftime? Will it be angry? Will it be clinical? Will they be calm? Will they just let it all out? Who knows? I'd love to be a fly on the wall for this one, though. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Now Minshew, the open man is Westbrook. And we're gonna get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to loft one deep over the middle. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports halftime report. It was David Johnson who had a solid first half. His guys have the lead, as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. DeAndre Carter returning it. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff 
spend the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. That's caught by his tight end, Jordan Akins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. 47 yards, 47 yards. Pushing through the contact. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 16 yards on that one, and also a Texan first down. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Watson. Eluding the pressure right. He'll try and run it. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. On second down now. It's Johnson, and he is close to a first down as he's tackled at the Jaguars, 27. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. First and 10, Watson sliding out of the pocket. He's going to take off with it. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Looking to throw again on second down. Watson. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson, and he'll get this one up to about his 14. Zach Cunningham, the leading tackler in the AFC in 2019, is there defensively. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up. Found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Here we go. 
from the gun. Minshew to throw. That's into the hands of Westbrook over the middle. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. On third down. It's Thompson, and he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, after an interception, last thing you want to do is go three and out, give the ball right back. They avoided that. Yeah, you definitely do not want to do that. I remember in college, I played with a really big-time player on defense. We ended up getting an interception as we passed the offense coming out. He told him, if you don't take care of this football, you have to answer to me later. You definitely want to take care of it, pick up first downs. Here we go, here we go. 90, go. Don't get nervous. Mike, Mike, 55. Check, 55. They'll run with Thompson. And he powers his way up past the 30. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. On second down. It's Robinson, and yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. They give it here to Thompson. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 44-yard line. Here's Minshew. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Minshew throwing complete to Westbrook. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 27-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. On first down, Robinson. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Running lanes read a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Three yards remain for second down. On the slant, this is Chark. 
And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Minshew and Shark on the hook up there. First down, Jacksonville. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Robinson and he's going to ball his way down to about the one yard line a nice run there eight yards moves him much closer to the goal line now for third down well you have to stretch for this one this is four down territory they've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing absolutely it's not the fourth quarter but still you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here no if you do that you might as well go ahead fighting for the end zone he lost the football it's out and the Texans scoop it and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. We can come up with a lot of different explanations here. None of them are going to work. At the one yard line and coughing it up, no you gotta way. You got to protect that thing like it's your firstborn. Your firstborn, your secondborn, your anyone. Born. It doesn't matter. Take care of the football. You're in a position to go in and score. At worst, you've given up a chance to get three points. First and 10, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. Well, that gives them a little room, but not much. A gain of two to the five. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room. If you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Throwing on second and eight. Watson, throw left side, complete. That's Johnson. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up. Back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. From his goal line here, Watson. And he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. And he gets this up just shy of the 15. Try to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped 10 yards, first down. Catch there by Kenny Stills. And he joined Houston last season and showed once again, as he has shown throughout his career, he can be a very reliable, good complimentary receiver. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the gun, here's Watson. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. They were searching for the tight end, Darren Fells. But it'll be second down. Well, partner, you know, looking back to week four, we had an abundance of scoring. You look at teams that scored 30 or more points. You had Denver, Seattle, Cincy, Minnesota, Cleveland, Dallas, Baltimore. I mean, the list, it keeps going and going. And we've seen teams go over 30 points or more 50 times already through four weeks. The record before this was 36 times. So the average game this year, just under 52 points, the highest scoring since the merger. I mean, what's going on here, CD? Well, there's a number of factors, I think. And normally, when you come off of a season, you know, when you come off the offseason, defenses are slightly ahead of offenses because of timing. But I think these guys in the offseason do such a great job of getting together. You know what I mean, Brandon? They find a way to meet in a city, 
go through their offensive plays, work on their timing, and I think that's helped them big time. The other thing, penalties are down, especially holding calls are across the league. That definitely benefits teams trying to run their offense. Decent gain on the scramble is six, but now it's fourth. I like his effort there. He got it done on his own, but let's face it. He puts defenses in a really stressful spot when he takes off and runs because a lot of guys have coverage responsibilities. Good job of rallying, though, because I thought when he first took off, he might pick up the first down. Anger is on to punt, and he gets this one away. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And so close to hitting pay dirt last time, fumbling down near the goal line. Now, how does that affect their psyche this time around? It's a tester, that's for sure, because to be that close and come away with no points is really disappointing, not just for the guys on offense, but the defensive players, too, who thought, hey, we're going to put some points up and have a little momentum going. They've got to find a way to just get it out of their minds, yeah. let it go, Term memory. and move on to the next series. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. J.J. Watt able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. So after the sack here, second and 14. Looking to throw it, Minshew to Thompson on the screen. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Out of the gun is Minshew. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage, and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Again, Minshew looking to throw. And trying to find Chark, but it's intercepted. Bernardrick McKinney, the linebacker, picks it. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it.
Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at about the 32. He'll start with a handoff to Johnson. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Josh Jones in on the stop. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Now that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. The Texans on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and seven. Out of the gun, Watson. Flushed out right. He can run for it, and he will. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Now, that was a whole lot of open space out in front of him, wasn't it? I'm telling you, Brandon, when things are going right, they are going right. And everything has been going their way for the most part. I saw that lane start to develop. Boom, he took advantage of it. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Here's Johnson. He's been busy this afternoon. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. He lost two there, and it's third down. The Texans on third down. They've been excellent. Six for seven. Here it's third and three. Back to throw. Watson. Finding fouls complete. Pass the 20. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's a first down with a cherry on top. 31 yards. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long, and I would say that going along with that has been confidence because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them, and now it's been a real issue for them during this game. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They toss it out right to Johnson. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. They go to Johnson again. Oh, refusing to go down. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. 
Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. Off the draw, here's Johnson, and he is going to lose yardage here. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. And they have just not been able to block him at all throughout this game. Seems like every other play, he's doing something in the backfield. Already got two sacks, and now here's a tackle behind the line. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And that will stretch the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's a 21-point game. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Cole now on the return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the ending, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish right. things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Minshew going to lead up the Jaguars first and 10, just shy of the 30. He'll set up to throw from the gun. And this one into the hands of DJ Shark. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? And now the throw taken in by Chark. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Nice play by DJ Chark there, and he's a great example of how a guy can improve from his rookie year to season two. Quiet as a rookie, a thousand yard season last year, ended up becoming a Pro Bowl selection for the Jaguars. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. Minshew sets to throw, and that's going to be incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. It'll be Minshew again. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. Zach Cunningham rolling in to get the sack. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure it out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. So third and long after the sack, tough road for Minshew and the Jags. They'll look to throw. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. 
coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he'll let this one go deep for Chark. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Here's a 20th carry for Johnson. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. From the 37, they work on second and six. Again, it's Johnson. And he is close to a first down as he's tackled at the Jaguars' 32. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Texans on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This will be kicked from the 42. It's a 52-yard attempt. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. Their defense was able to hold serve, albeit with a little help from that missed field goal as they settle in now first and ten. Well, they can probably live with that with this late lead in the fourth quarter. That's one of the few things that's gone wrong. You're exactly right. This one was well in hand. That kick there was more for cosmetics, you know, to add to their score. Not getting it, that shouldn't harm them at all. Minshew and the Jags now with a first and 10 at their own 42. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Minshew. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And a nice pick up there as he'll get about nine, and that will lead us to a stoppage here at the two-minute warning.
So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass for us. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 18. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. He's got it complete to Thompson. That catch good for only a couple. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Flush to his right, and he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Brandon Dunn. In there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. And a tough ask here. They're going to go for it on fourth down and nine. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this Texans defense stands tall. And they will take a knee here. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And they were really helped by their defense, forcing three turnovers. I think what we saw in this one, today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot of... But now, it's about taking the ball away, taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.